Hello, my name is Catherine De Vries. I'm the creative director here at the Sebastopol Center for the Arts. Our first book arts exhibition was in 2009, and it was juried by Donna Seeger. Since then, we have had a show every two years. This year, Renee Owen suggested that she would coordinate the exhibition, and she did an extremely good job. She found the jurors, Alicia Bailey and Helen Hebert, and together with Janeline Hall, they created and did the installation of this exhibition. It's a very successful, successful show, and uh, I will give the word to Renee Owen to continue and talk about all the work that's here. Thank you so much, everyone, for participating, and thank you very much to Renee Owen. Hi, I'm Renee Owen, and I'm one of the co-coordinators for the Pulp Exhibit. As Catherine mentioned to you, the Pulp Book and Paper Arts Exhibit has been up on show at Sebastopol Center for the Arts from July 30th to September 4th of 2022. I coordinated it along with Jenny Lynn Hall, and we selected a couple of jurors, Alicia Bailey and Helen Hebert. The exhibit features both innovative and traditional explorations of book and paper arts, including paper objects, book-related objects, altered books, and sculptural works. Artists from all over the Bay Area, as well as many other parts of California and 14 other states and a couple of international artists participated. I want to just say a little bit about the jurors. Alicia Bailey is a curator and artist. She's also the owner and director of ABC Darien Books, a successful gallery dedicated to book arts, and she's the visionary and curator behind the annual Artist Books Cornucopia. Helen Hebert is a Colorado artist using handmade paper as her primary medium. She's the author of several how-to books about paper making and paper crafts and hosts a popular blog and online teaching forum. Helen and Alicia's statement about the show and jurying process was that it was exciting to see a diverse array of materials and structures that pulp can be transformed into. The great number of entries to the exhibition shows that book and paper arts are alive and well. I'm going to take you around the show now and give you a narrated walkthrough. This first piece is called Waves Meet the Shore by Marsha Lavin from Sebastopol, California. And it tells a story about our polluted oceans and the debris that washes up onto the shore. It's printed in paper watercolor and found debris. This next piece is called Flowers Large by Sean Olson from Oakland, California. It's a second place winner in the exhibit. The work was created from removing the printed area from paper towels. It plays with our complex and contradictory feelings towards nature. This next piece is called 163 Ripples, Ladder Fish by Chris Perry of Ridgefield, Connecticut. He used altered books and using color and line to create a sculptural terrain. This next piece is called Lateral Thinking, Japanese Aesthetics by Jane Ewing of Grand Haven, Michigan. Calligraphically Cal lettered, this concertina book format offers a stunning sculpture with suma ink, paint, graphite, and gold leaf. The title of this piece is Faulty Towers, Night and Day by Barbara Shapiro, a San Francisco artist. The inspiration was the sinking Millennium Towers in Miami, and it's a statement on the twisted towers being flimsy and the insecure housing that's provided. Barbara cut the prints with a pasta cutter and plat platted them into twisted cubes. This piece, Poems by Jamie Tabak of Santa Rosa, is a drum leaf binding artist book with evocative monoprints, etchings, and drawings to create its own colorful language. This piece titled Books on Ice from Rebecca Herman, a San Francisco artist, is a set of five books about figures in the history of Marxism, socialism, and communism. The book covers are created through ice dyeing, in which the dyes seep through melting ice. This book here slash here 
colon, metadata mining by Mary Marsh, a renowned printmaker from Oakland, uses photopolymer intaglio and letterpress and reveals our desire for constant connection and the commerce of personal data. This wall-mounted piece is Clear Lines by Iwa Gavriolov. It's intricate circles that have been hand cut from an old book. She's from Palo Alto and she's created a non-linear narrative of these intricate circles of paper. Prairie Interior by Deborah Disman from Los Angeles. And this sculptural artist book took third place in the exhibit. Paper and jute cords evoke motion. This large installation in the corner of the gallery is titled El Proceso by Michelle Wilson from Oakland, a renowned paper maker who teaches at Stanford. The book is made of handmade paper, letterpress printed. She created a custom book stand out of wood and it took her six hours to install this piece with pages flying off the book like birds in the sky. This installation is called Inscapes by Alex Ann Shaw from Chicago, Illinois. It's an interactive installation in an unbound book, a series of 14 microscope slides, medical specimens, microfiche. This black and white book is titled Tri-Strangulation by Denise Stevenson with Ocean, from Oceanside, California, about three ways women are silenced the resonance in these triangulated text of words and data and images speak to us. This one titled 44.6 degrees Fahrenheit or seven degrees Celsius is by Julia Feldman from Santa Rosa. She received a merit award from the jurors for this densely packed urban environment leading to urban heat islands. She used repurposed wool, fabric, and intricate hand embroidery. The piece above that is titled ZXB Bundle by Susan Joy Cher from Anchorage, Alaska. It's inspired by traditional Chinese pieces and contains sewn boxes, origami boxes, pop-ups, flexagons, and indigo dyed fabrics. Then we have Picturesque California by Pauline Menzer, a printmaker from Santa Rosa, California, an accordion fold book with letterpress and lino cut on repurposed book pages. This cut paper piece is titled The Tulips Are Too Red in the First Place, They Hurt Me by Claire Dong of Redmond, Washington. The title comes from a line by a Sylvia Plath poem. And then we have a large paper sculpture titled I Thought I'd Live Forever by Marsha Lavin from Sebastopol, California. With handmade flax paper, it's tactile and meandering shape pulls us in for a closer look. Two pieces by Lorraine Crowder titled Gone Missing, made from child's dresses tissue paper pattern pieces that she created a sculpture out of, a vocabulary of loss. Peace by Naomi Velasquez from Pocatello, Idaho, a letterpress printed book with embroidery using handmade paper and a Turkish map fold construction made of found maps and thread. And then Our Specters, by Sarah Press of Sebastopol, California. The paintings borrow compositions and colors from old photos. The luminous manifestations provide a haunting color palette and imagery. And then Ripple's Diatom from Chris Perry of Ridgefield, Connecticut, an altered book with intricate cut paper which immerses us in the space between. Before the Fall by Deborah Disman of LA, a sculptural artist book hung from the ceiling with hemp cord, 
canvas and wandering threads creating its own topography. And then one of my pieces titled Beyond, Between Falling Away and Arising, an unbound book that's an homage to the flora and fauna of our planet, environmental destruction and habitat disruption with plants bringing their notes of beauty, eco-printed with plants and embroidered. This wall piece is titled All That Is Solid Melts Into Air from Mika Dekudowicz from Warsaw, Poland. It refers to the contemporary paradox of the individual titled from Berman's book with Kozo fiber and serigraphy print. And we have Sherry Loveler's book titled This Journey to Ixlan, an accordion fold book inspired by Carlos Castaneda's book with sumi ink and gold leaf and exquisite abstract calligraphic paintings. On the wall, we have Random Words by Monica Lee of San Francisco, an altered book from a discarded library book using a sewing machine and typewriter, creating a palette and mark mating, mark making, conjuring a memory of making. And then Fortune 500 from Linda Ortiz of Santa Rosa, 500 handmade paper fortune cookies, their familiar shapes and translucent paper and script pulling us in. In the corner titled Ungrounded by Daniel Krakauer of San Anselmo, California is a mobile made from original engineering documents that were a tribute to his father, along with peeled willow and string, the movement and shadows speaking of impermanence. And on the wall, Open Pit Mind from Eric Johnson from Sebastopol, California, a tour de force of printmaking from this founder of Iota Press, a letterpress broadside with many, many individual prints. Michelle Wilson from Oakland, California's book, Bison Time, an artist book containing eight unique watermarks speaking to the dis disappearance of bisons using letterpress print and unique linoleum blocks. This piece is titled Security Blanket 3 by Iwa Gavriolov, made of paper, shredded old prints which she knitted, the manipulation of the paper creating its own panorama. This next book is titled Weave Through Winter by Laurel Moorhead of San Diego, California, a series of paper weavings from a book of prints, a vintage travel posters, and hand printed in hand stamped papers. Then we have Cup of Gold by Valerie Kerrigan of North Adams, Massachusetts, which references the indigenous people of Northern California who relied on poppy for its healing properties. And then on the wall, Lionel's Glimpse by B. Stephen Strauss of Berkeley, California, an homage to Feiniger using Japanese and other papers. And then A Basket of Carrots by Lorraine Crowder of Sunnyvale, California, including research about carrots in seven books that she created she wove the basket from rolled, recycled book pages. On the wall, we have California Drought by Iris Roundtree of Healdsburg, California, made from handmade paper and gathered plant material, all collected in Sonoma County, California, collaged into an abstract landscape. And then Inconclusive Manual for Unanswered Questions 
by printmaker from Pengrove, Tiana Cron, along with the hand created by Sarah Press, a cloth-bound letterpressed book creating their own visual poetry. Ellen Nudson of Gainesville, California's book Rule of Thumb is a book cover with exposed movables and letterpress artist book. And then we have the 10 foot piece Firewood by papermaker John Babcock of Soquel, California. The intricately cut letters translate into the saying, those who carry firewood for the masses are those who freeze to death in the wind and snow. A Chinese proverb in tribute to Dr. Li Wen Liang in Wuhan, China, who tried to warn the public about coronavirus. The shadows of the cut out letters creating a moving tribute. That gallery on the wall is Solstice Flight by B. Stephen Strauss of Berkeley. He used paper to paint an ethereal landscape. And then The Private Realm by Sharon Fingold of Los Altos, California, an altered book, a green box, and a corset, peekaboo imagery, and tactile textiles creating intimacy. followed by the book Night for Day, The Polarities Project by Michelle Lynn Dyerness of Altadena, California. This wandering accordion book creates its own landscape. This piece, What She Said by Denise Stevenson of Oceanside, California is a triangle book which deals with the psychological phenomenon of triangulation. It's letterpress printed. And then we have Catch of the Day by Bettina Pauly of San Francisco, a fishy flag book with rubber stamps carved by the artist, handmade paper, and 42 fish cut out by hand, perfectly conserved in a sardine tin. And then the Diminutive Numbers book by Sarah Burgess of Mill Valley with its 3D printed cover, hand cut paper pages. It slots together with no glue or stitching needed. And then the book I, Ape, E.D., Deep Owl by Bridget McGraw of Oakland, California a magic wallet structure which honors Emily Dickens' fragments of paper that survived to suggest a poem that was written on two scraps. On the wall, we have the piece Gutter by Claudia Smelzer of Berkeley, California. Blank book pages joined by rusted pens with the distressed rusting evoking psychological or physical pain. And then another piece of my own juried into the show called On the Backs of Slaves, Coffea Arabica, a scroll depicting the brutal history of coffee with red thread embroidered like stitches crudely sewn into whip tracks snaking down a slave's back, created used with used paper coffee filters. This artist book is by Lucia Zanamorowski of Santa Cruz. It's titled Holly Woodlove. It's an artist book with silk screened and laser cut images recording fragments that linger long after viewing them. This sculptural piece is titled The Enchanting Desert by Laura Russell. The images and circular shape of this complex book structure create their own topography. And then on the wall, we have the piece titled Bratty Lurker by John Accurso from Sonora, California. The altered and manipulated book is mounted on a canvas wrap stretcher bar and it creates a bold sculptural statement. 
Next on the wall is the piece titled Scribe by Joni Sher of Concord, California, about the inner voice and going with your gut feeling. Paper pulp adhered to an inner, inner armature along with found objects and paint. Then the book Back to the Garden by Deborah Benioff Friedman of Walnut Creek, California, made from old maps, grocery bags, book pages, and other ephemera to create an atlas. The threads and tattered pages create a mysterious artifact. This book titled Seeing, Knowing, Forgetting, Seeing is by Z. Morvitz of Inverness, California. It's a hand-bound book with single-sheet Coptic stitch on antique covers and the drawings of boulders that Z creates. Their granite surfaces are dense with layers of meaning. Then we have the book art sculpture titled Bookworm by Anne Savageau of Davis, California, showing a worm eating its way through two old book volumes created from found books and sculpting compound. It's playful in its pathos. On the wall, the piece Perspective on Those Closest by Tom Ari Donch of Vallejo, California, a cast paper bass relief sculpture made from cotton lintners, its swirling aesthetic speaking to us intuitively. This sculptural piece is titled ABC Darien Animalium, a bestiary of what the animals taught me by Shaw Towers from Woodway, Texas, a one-of-a-kind artist book of dictionary definitions and illustrations of animals in a delightful layered flag book structure. On the wall, the piece Collection 6 by Joyce Gold of Denver, California, Handmade paper made of abaca, flax, rag, jute, and yucca fibers, pulp painted, laminated, and burned. It punctuates the depth and breadth of paper making. And then Tangled Memories from Daniel Ramirez Herrera of San Francisco. This sculptural work is from a recycled book of America's cultural memory of the Vietnam War and the AIDS epidemic. It alludes to our collective memory and the stigma of what it means to be HIV positive. The New Complete Book of Bicycling by Ben Danino of Minneapolis. This book, book sculpture was created by painstakingly removing most of the text and leaving only selected illustrations exactly where they were printed by excavation and cutting from a vintage book. Then we have The Electricity of Now by Carol Brighton of Berkeley, California, a hardcover letterpress book with handmade paper covers of Himalayan lokta fiber, each with a unique inso. In the insides of the books, lino cuts are footprints and wiggly lines of land, sea, and moon. And on the wall, Beauty in Fragments by Samita Chatterjee from Bellmead, New Jersey, a collage of many tiny fragments, a self-portrait of the artist who is broken yet together, ugly yet beautiful, many yet one. This book is created by Lucy Childs of Martinez, California, titled A Pine Grove on Quiet Island Through the Season, hand-painted in pages, linen-covered, the organic and nature-inspired hand-colored prints. And then Critical Stenosis by Francine Goodfriend of Santa Rosa, California, an accordion book which the artist made while partially paralyzed using collaged images of ballerinas and circus performers contrasted with medical illustrations and terminology from her medical records using old encyclopedia pages and fabric. And then we have Connectivity by Merca Naster of Sea Ranch, California. Leaves on the accordion fabric pages, all different plant species, 
all part of an invisible system, but connected to each other through an underground network. In addition to fabrics, she used black bamboo from her garden and metal chains to symbolize the underlying connection of all of life. And then we have Threads of Life Codex by Surveyne Brion of Palo Alto, California. It interweaves the stories of the origin of life, genetics, and the development of human communication. Three sculptural accordion-like books in a covered box. The Wild Bunch Hymnal by D.R. Wakefield from Ghoul in the UK. Portraits of the most notorious members of the Gang of Outlaws and their favorite hymns. Etched portraits and letterpress hymns in this stunning book. The piece at the entryway to the gallery is called Pando Diary by Jenny Cooley from Santa Fe, New Mexico. It consists of a video, a printed book, and there were 30 pieces in a box. During COVID, grounded and isolated, she painted empty cereal boxes and went to work. Titled The or Not by Brooke Colvey of Sebastopol, California. This is an installation consisting of screens on the wall and an artist book on a music stand. Laser etched plexi screen, gessoed, painted, sanded, a letterpress printed catalog pages all reveal layers and layers of patterns and meanings. Lost in the Eelgrass by Deborah Benioff Friedman of Walnut Creek, California. This piece received the Coordinators Award. It's boat-like sculpture of wire, handmade paper, and paper pulp with haunting shadows speaking of the transience of our time on this planet. This piece is called Water Calling by Camden Richards of Kensington, California. Dragon scale binding, letterpress text, cyanotype imagery, an audio of water sounds and felt covers in a beautiful box. It's a liquid prayer, a love letter to water with its waterscapes of text, image, and sound, inviting readers into a deep seeing with the hope of inspiring sacred reciprocity. Thank you for joining us for this exhibition. I wanted to express our appreciation to Catherine DeVrisi and Sebastopol Center for the Arts for making this show possible. Also wanted to thank all the many volunteers who assisted generously in the work of installing and setting up the exhibit. And also thanks to the artists themselves for lending their voices and their art to this wonderful exhibit.